your everyday life. So we want everybody on the Clear Studies platform. As you're coming in, make sure that you're hitting that thumbs up button. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that share button on Facebook. Let everybody know that Wednesday night in the Word is on right now with Bishop Lippman. Hit that share button. That helps you to email a link out or send a link out in some way or another so that your friends and your followers can find us. And I think that uh, these teachings are of benefit to us as we grow in the ways of God and as we learn and as we employ new techniques uh, in order to really apply God's word to our lives. So I definitely want you to share it. I think it's a shareable and well worth sharing. And don't forget, we are on every Tuesday and Wednesday. On Tuesdays, I do TNT, which is Tuesday night teaching at 7 p.m. right here on these very same channels. And TNT is an opportunity for you to grow in your studies in the Word. It's very practical and pragmatic, and it just adds more to your life. Now's the time that we really need to be filling up on God's Word. Amen? And so I want you to come along with me for Tuesday TNT at 7 p.m. and also right here Wednesday in the Word at 7 p.m. as well. Well, God bless those of you that are popping in. Good to see you. Make sure you make your presence known. Hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, let others know that we're on. And it helps us to be found in the crowded, crowded algorithms of Facebook and YouTube. There are a lot of people out here who are creating content. And every time you hit that thumbs up button, every time you hit like, every time you hit share, it's not just me saying, hey, like me, share me, follow me. <laughs> it's actually pushing this content out so that others can find us. So that's the reason why I ask you to do that. So let's jump into tonight's teaching. We are continuing in our teaching from the book of Daniel. And we're talking about being faithful in all circumstances, being faithful in all circumstances. Tonight we're going to look at Daniel's call to trust and live because just like Daniel, each and every one of us has a call to trust and live in faith and to trust God in spite of what it is that we're going through. I want to begin with a question and I'd like you to put your response down in the comments section. Have you ever faced a trial in which you were pressured you were pressured to abandon your integrity or your faithfulness to God. Have you ever faced a trial in which you were pressured to abandon your integrity or your faithfulness to God? And as you put your comments in, let me just give you mine. Uh, I have definitely been faced with some challenging times when indeed it was a matter where I felt pushed against the wall and I felt as if I was being pressured to literally abandon what I knew to be right, to be honest, to be fair, to be true, and to take on the ways of the company that I may have been working in or the people that I may have been around. I think all of us have experienced some degree of pressure from outside influences that challenge our faith and try to push us toward abandoning what we know to be right and true. And that's what we see in tonight's lesson as we look at this section in the book of Daniel. Now, one thing I want you to know off the cuff, and I say this all the time, that is this, age is no barrier to spiritual usefulness. Age is no barrier to spiritual usefulness. Now, what does that mean? Simply this, Daniel is a, a little over 90 years old at the point that he is thrown into this den of hungry lions. And you're familiar with this story perhaps from Sunday school or from reading your Bible, even from childhood. But I just want to break it down and give you some practical applications from it. And you would think that at 90 years of age, after serving God from at least uh, earlier years prior to teenage years, because it was during his teenage years that he, along with other children from Babylon, were brought, or from, from Israel rather, were brought as slaves and captives into Babylon. And he had proven his faithfulness to God 
over a very long time frame. Yet, at an age above 90 years, you would think that he would be able to kind of retire from faith, if you will, just kind of just chill out. What's up, everybody that's coming in? Good to see you. Good to see you. Glad you're here with us. Hit that like button, share, and subscribe. And you would think that he was able to be able to kind of retire from faith, to kind of take it easy, to kind of coast his way, if you would, into heaven, but not so. What we need to understand is that age is no barrier to spiritual usefulness, meaning no matter what your age is, God still has a plan to use you. God still wants to use you. God still wants to build your faith. And many times I've run into people who claim that they're too old to do this and they're too old to start that and they're too old to, you know, to explore something new. As long as you're alive, you have an opportunity to experience something new. Here's our first teaching point for this evening, and it's really simple, but it's really powerful. Trust God. Can somebody type that in for us? Come on. Trust God. Now I'm going to read from Daniel chapter number six, beginning at verse number one and several verses to help to lay a foundation. And we're in Daniel 6 tonight as we continue talking about being faithful to God in all types of circumstances. And our first point again is trust God. Now, Daniel 6, 1. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom. By the way, a satrap is simply a governor or a supervisor. Uh, it's, it's just an authoritative role with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. Now remember, Daniel's a slave that's being brought into this brand new country as a child, yet at this point in his life, Daniel is still in a position of authority, even in a foreign country. Isn't that amazing? That's just God right there. So the satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. So Daniel's role is to oversee a certain amount of people so that the king would not experience any loss or any backstabbing, if you would, in his kingdom. Now, verse 3. Now, Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Wow. It sounds sort of like Joseph does it, doesn't it? He comes in as a slave, remember? In Genesis, he comes in as a slave, and yet he is faithful to God through all the circumstances that he faces. And God oversees the whole process. It looks like he's about to lose it all, but God sets him above the entire kingdom. Daniel is in that same place as a foreigner coming in as a slave, and now God is about to elevate him and promote him to a higher place, which is a reminder, trust God. That's our first point tonight. God bless you that's just coming in. Check this out. Verse 4, at this, the administrators and satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. Daniel lives such an integral life that they're not able to come up with any charges against him. Watch this now. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Wouldn't it be awesome if that was our testimony? That our haters, if you will, uh, try to find something against us, but they can't because our lives are not corrupt. Verse 5, Daniel chapter 6. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So they knew the only way to trip up Daniel would be if you put him in a position where he is pressured to abandon his integrity or his relationship and devotion to his God. Now, verse 6. So these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, May King Darius live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king 
should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, what they have done is that they have now fed into the ego of the king in order to get him to elevate himself. But this was really a trap that they were trying to set for Daniel, who was one of his favorite people, and now the one that he had planned to elevate above everybody else in the entire kingdom of Babylon. So now your majesty issued the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. Verse 9, so King Darius put the decree in writing. Now, verse number 10, now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room. Watch this now, where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is the headquarters of their faith as Jews, and it still is. And the Jewish slave who may have been anywhere else in the world would turn his body toward Jerusalem and pray toward Jerusalem as the seat of God as they knew it. And notice how often Daniel prayed. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Now we see Daniel respond to this very critical situation with prayer. And Daniel displayed many signs of trust in God. Many people under that kind of pressure would have given in, would have refused to pray. Remember, the entirety of the whole law and this whole scheme that they concocted and set up was based upon anyone praying to anybody other than, than the king. At this point, Daniel knew exactly what the decree was. He was the, in the higher up. He was probably standing in the room when they came in with this crazy scheme. And instead of going silent on God, radio silent on God, Daniel intensified and continued his pattern of prayer. And in that, Daniel displayed tremendous trust in God. And notice this, y'all. He did not go inside, close the door, shut the window, pull the shade down, put a chair under the door handle to ensure no one heard him. He lifted the window up. He didn't mind them knowing my prayer won't change because you're trying to set me up. In fact, it almost seemed as if he wanted to get caught. Well, listen, at the age of 90 years old, he knew he was no match for lions, he knew that he was no match. He couldn't handle lions. He couldn't fight them off or anything like that. But Daniel knew that he had a God who is the Lion of Judah. And that lion can always defeat any little kitty cat. Now, oftentimes we find ourselves where we have a, a, a defining wall between the secular and the spiritual. But not so with Daniel. Daniel never left his spiritual practices in order to fit in and blend in in a secular world. You and I, ladies and gentlemen, should never leave our spiritual practice or our spiritual mindset, our spiritual heart towards God, if you will, our worship of God, our allegiance to God behind in order to blend in with the secular side. In other words, we ought to be who we are, wherever we are, no matter what it is that we have to deal with. Our faith has got to be firm. Somebody type that in. Our faith has got to be firm. Come on. Our faith has got to be firm. And so we learn that when we believe, tears today will be dried by triumphs of tomorrow. We will find the strength to live for our God. When we trust God today that he'll take care of us in our tomorrow, we will have strength for this day to live through whatever comes my way.
It reminds me of that hymn of the church, when peace like a river tendeth by way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Whatever my lot, whatever it comes up, when I understand that the God I serve is the God of today, tomorrow, and the days I don't even know about that follow tomorrow, I can live at peace. And I can know that if I have to shed a tear today, it's going to turn into a triumph tomorrow. Amen. So again, our first teaching point tonight is trust God. If you just tuned in, welcome to Wednesday in the Word. I'm Bishop Littman. I'm so happy that you're here with us. Make sure you're in the comments. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to know that you can trust God even if you're 90 years old, even if you're frail, your faith doesn't have to be frail, even though your physical might be frail. So let's pick up now in Daniel chapter 6, verse 11 and 12, and it reads like this. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. If your enemies were to pop up on you, what would they find you doing? <laughs> Would they find you praying or would they find you paying? <laughs> Verse 12. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god or human being except to you, your majesty, would be thrown in the lion's den? They knew that this was an irrevocable law. And so that's why they do this, because they had found now evidence that Daniel, who was their target, was in, fact, uh, was in fact going against what the law of the land was for those 30 days. The king answered, the, the decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. He didn't know who the victim would be. Then they said to the king, Daniel who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you. Watch this, y'all. They're just being so messy right now. Don't you just hate it when people get messy? Your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing, he still prays three times a day. Oh, that'll preach right there. He still prays. <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing if no matter what we experience in our lives, no matter what the upheaval, no matter what the issues were, that it could be said of us, he or she still prays. Oh my God. I think that's a word right there for somebody that's going through something that you don't understand or perhaps something that seems overwhelming. Let it be your testimony that no matter the peril, no matter what you face, he or she still prays. Somebody type that in, please. He still prays. He still prays. He still prays. He still prays three times a day. And you know why he still prays? Because he still knows God is able to deliver him, come what may. Anybody know he's able to deliver? Watch this now. Let's move to verse 14. This is good, y'all. Daniel chapter 6, verse 14. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. Wait a minute. He's the one that created this law, but he did not know that it was going to impact one of his favorite because Daniel had favor with this king. He loved Daniel. He believed in Daniel. Daniel was obviously extremely trusted. And when you walk right with God and when you're friendly to people, hello, God will open doors for you to make people love you that should hate you. But now a lot of people are not able to have these kind of doors open because they do love God, but they can't stand people. <laughs> do you know anybody like that? Don't you put their name in them comment sections. Just say, yes, pastor, I know somebody like that. <laughs> so he didn't know that this was going to impact Daniel. And now he realizes it's a total setup. And so verse 14 says that when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. And he determined, oh, this is so crazy. He determined to rescue Daniel and, to, and made every effort until sundown to save him. The king of a pagan nation <laughs> has so much respect and love and admiration for Daniel, a 90-something-year-old prophet, that when he realizes he has been set up and he, the king himself, had been set up, 
he goes to every possible effort to try and save him until sundown. So he's trying to save this more than octogenarian. He's trying to save this 90-something-year-old prophet from having to face uh, the penalty of the law which he had violated. Well, verse number 15. And you might be surprised who God is going to raise up to try to save you and to help you out. You, you just might be surprised at who God is raising and preparing right now to rescue from you from a situation. Verse 15. Then the men went as a group to King Darius. And notice, it's always as a group. Can I throw this in for free? Watch them groups. What, somebody typed it in for me. I, I, I felt some. Watch those cliques. Watch those groups. Watch those folks that always hang out together, that's always up to something. You don't need to fit in and blend into every crowd. I'll leave that alone. That's for another day. But we will return to that subject. Now, they came as a group to King Darius and said to him, Remember, your majesty, that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. So they are reminding him, even though he's trying on the low, perhaps, in verse 14, to try to rescue Daniel to save him from this awful penalty of being thrown into a lion's den at 90-something years of age, no defense, no, no energy, no nothing. Yet they come back and remind him of what the law says. In other words, what they were politely saying is, I don't care what you try, you cannot save Daniel from this. And they were right. That king couldn't save Daniel from this. <laughs> but the king could save Daniel from this. Let's read on. Uh, verse number 16, chapter 6 of Daniel. So the king gave the order and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God, whoop, there it is, may your God whom you serve continually rescue you, exclamation point. So it's not a question mark at the end. It's not even a period at the end. It is an exclamation point. It's, it's, it's beyond a wish for a, a successful outcome. It is a exclamatory statement of faith from a heathen king that knows he doesn't have a relationship with Daniel's God. That's why he said, may your God, capital G, not small. When he speaks of his own gods, he's got to speak in lowercase g and an S at the end. But when he speaks of Daniel's God, it's a capital G and no S at the end, meaning there's only one true and sovereign God. And this king knew that there was only one true and sovereign God, even though he didn't know him personally. Oh, this is good, y'all. He knew somebody who knew him personally. And because of the life and the integrity that Daniel had displayed before this king, Daniel made his God look good. How we walk before the world, child of God, makes our God look good or it makes our God look bad. So may your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you, exclamation point. And it's a quotation, meaning the king himself said it. Now verse 17, a stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. So it is signed, it is sealed, and notice now a stone has been brought to be placed over the mouth, and in this stone, their clay, uh, their clay emblem from their signet ring was now stamped, meaning no one can open this door, at least from the outside. Mm. Oh, I'm about to get happy all by myself here. Anybody know where I'm headed with this? God doesn't need outside access because he's on the inside. Lord have mercy. Now, watch this, y'all. It gets gooder. It gets gooder. -er. Verse 18. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him. And he could not sleep. Wait a minute. The king who signed and sealed a death notice for this prophet, yet knew God was able to bring him out, was at a fine 
palatial abode with the best of linen, the best of mattresses, the best of you name it, all kind of entertainment. And yet he refused to eat and he could not sleep and didn't want any dancers or anything like that to come. No musicians or magicians to come before him. He is fasting and denying himself of sleep. But watch what happens in verse number 19. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. You never hear of a king rushing anywhere. But this lowercase k-i-n-g knew that there was an uppercase k-i-n-g that moves at midnight, that moves in the midst of all kinds of situations. And he got up early to go and see what the, the capital K king had done. Verse 20, when he came near the den, he's not even there yet, he's nearby and he's calling out to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue from the lions? Verse 21 is one of the most powerful verses in the scriptures. Daniel answered, Ah, oh, it's the next morning. It's the next day. Daniel has been able to rest all night long. A 90-something-year-old prophet without the benefit of multivitamins or any of that kind of thing <laughs> has been able to rest all night long. And yet a king who put him in this situation has not been able to rest. And he calls out in anguish from a distance, which is indicative of the fact that on his way he was calling, Daniel, 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 with anguish in his voice. In verse 21, look at God, Daniel answered, may the lowercase king live forever. That's just a greeting to say, hey, I'm good, bruh, and I recognize your position. Now, here's point number two, y'all. Live with courage. Live with courage. God bless you that just came in. God bless you. It's so good to see you. Make sure you're in the comments. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Daniel faced all this and kept his faith, not to mention his sanity. Who on here right now has gone through all kinds of craziness in your life? I'm not just talking about 2020, 2021. I'm talking about in your lifetime but you still got your right mind. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. He kept you in your right mind. That's what God does when you live with courage. When you trust him, number one, and when you live with courage, number two, God will allow you to keep your right mind. Because believing that the Lord can change everything through us, beyond us, or even after us, uh, what is what should keep us going and living courageously because we are living in hope, the confidence that our God will fulfill purposes through us if we stand for him. Ooh, this is some good teaching, y'all. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Lord, thank you so much for keeping us. I think I'm going to stop right there. I'll pick up next time. I want you to know God is able to keep you. God is able to sustain you. God is able to allow you to go through midnight madness and wake you up in the morning to the sound of those who couldn't sleep while you slept all night long on the belly of a lion. I want to pray with you right now. If you have a prayer need, drop it in. Drop it in the comments. Also, you can email me at prayerwithbishop at gmail.com. I'd love to pray with you and pray for you. Father, Thank you for my friends who are watching. Thank you for those that you're speaking to even in this moment to remind us of your power, to remind us that you are available, you're accessible, to remind us that you are an equipper and you are able to strengthen us even when life wants to strip us. God, I pray for strength. I pray for favor. Lord, even during this holy week, Jesus being led through the streets of Golgotha. Jesus being carried to his cross and carrying that wood cross on his shoulder. Father, 
thank you. That's a reminder that no matter the cross we must bear, you are there. And your blood covers, your blood redeems, your blood strengthens, your blood equips. And so now, God, we declare victory, favor, power in the name of Jesus. I speak healing over your body, over your finances, over your family, over your friendships. I speak freedom to your mind, peace and health, wellness, prosperity and favor all over your life. And I thank God for what he's going to do and how he's going to lift you from the lion's dens of your life. Trust him, family. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Hey, I love sharing these times of teaching with you. Make sure you join me every Tuesday for TNT Tuesday Night Teaching. And we're right here at 7 p.m. Don't forget to join the email.